I'd like to discuss now the concept of fourth order tensors. And there, there are a number of different ways to define fourth order tensors. Uh, we're going to pick a fairly straightforward way and have another video on a slightly more uh, advanced way of looking at higher order tensors. But we'll, we'll, we'll stick with something relatively basic. So we're going to define it kind of like we did with second order tensors. Second order tensors map was a linear map from vectors to vectors. Fourth order tensors we will define as a linear map from second order tensors to second order tensors. So a fourth order tensor takes in a second order tensor and produces a second order tensor. And the operation is linear. So our second order tensor here will be C. Okay, And so I'll use this kind of double bar notation where there's a vertical bar inside my second order tensor. So that C is an example of, uh, or sorry, fourth order tensors. So I could, I would think of that as a fourth order tensor because I had these two vertical bars. Or if I wanted an A that was a fourth order tensor, I'd stick another vertical bar in it. So that's the notation that I'll use. Uh, there are other notations that people use, but this is relatively common. So here I have a fourth order tensor C and it takes in, it acts on a second order tensor A and is producing a second order tensor B. And the property that C has to have is that it's linear. So if I apply it to a linear combination of second order tensors, so alpha and beta are just real numbers, I get the linear combination of C acting on A and B first and then multiplying by the scalars alpha and beta and then doing the addition. So that's the exact same definition that we had for second order tensors second order tensors we use here for fourth order. Um, just like with second order tensors, we can talk about components of tensors. And when we have fourth order tensors, we end up with four indices. So there are basically 81 possible numbers to define a fourth order tensor. So I can be 1, 2, 3, J can be 1, 2, 3, K can be 1, 2, 3, and L can be 1, 2, 3. So 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 3 to the 4, which is 81. Uh, the rule for computing them is, is the following. You first apply C to a, a tensor outer product of two basis vectors, so E, K, E, L here. And then you double contract it with the tensor outer product of two basis vectors, so E, I, and E, J. And there's the double contraction here. And this is the rule for extracting components. And you can think of this tensor outer product if you want. Normally, when you, we have the extraction rule for second order tensors, we're using basis vectors. So here you can think of these tensor outer products as basis tensors if you want. So sometimes we'll write it as capital E subscript IJ. And so that's just a definition of that tensor outer product of the little EI with the little EJ. If we want to flip this around and write the tensor itself in terms of the components, then we have a representation that looks just like what we had for second order tensors, but now we'll use the, the basis tensors in, in the outer product here. So we have EIJ outer product EKL, and then we just stick in all the components CIJKL here. So there, there are four double sums, or four, there are four sums here that you have to do, each one going from one to three. So there are 81 terms that get all added together to construct the fourth order tensor. Uh, fourth order tensors, we'll see later on, they come up a lot in describing material properties, uh, especially elastic material properties. Uh, just a few rules on the notation. So if I take, a, if I construct a tensor outer product here of two second order tensors, A and B, and I act on a third tensor, C, the definition of this is kind of like what we had with the vectors is that I'll take the, the two things that are next to each other and I'll contract them. And in this case, we'll do a double contraction of B and C, and then we'll multiply by the, the third uh, tensor there, A. So that's the, that's the rule that's at play here with these outer products of second order tensors. Uh, additionally, this expression is just AIJ, BKL, CKL. So BKL, CKL is that double contraction, all dummy indices, and then the A has the free indices I and J. Um, note also that if I wanted to compute the components of 
the outer product to two second order tensors, A and B, there'll be four indices, I, J, K, and L, and I'll use my component extraction rule that I defined over here for fourth order tensors to do it. So I'll, I'll double contract on the front with E, I, J, and I'll operate on the back side here with E, K, L. And so that's how we get that relationship there. Uh, and if we expand this out step by step, if I first consider this operation here, that's going to give me B double contracted with EKL multiplied by A. So that's just a number. And then I have to compute the EIJ double contracted with what's left, which will be against the A. So from the B double contracted on the EKL, I'll get BKL. And then I'll have EIJ double contracted with A. And that's just going to be AIJ. So I'll, and I'll, I'll swap the order there, AIJ, BKL. So that, that's how you do that type of calculation there. Um, a few more operational rules that are useful to know. Just so the initial form of C acting on A, so fourth order tensor acting on second order, that'll be C, I, J, K, L, A, K, L. So C acting on A ends up contracting the two last indices of C with the two indices of A, and they match pairwise there. So KL, KL. Uh, if I have B, second order tensor, double contracted with a fourth order tensor C, I'm going to end up with a double contraction on the first two indices of C with the two indices of B. Uh, and lastly, if I have, if I put these two together and I have B double contracted with CA, I can put everything together and I'll end up with B I J C I J K L A K L. So no free indices now. It's just a number. Okay, so these are just some of the rules for manipulating the indices and in, in the operations of fourth order tensors. So maybe we will let's go ahead and look at an example or two here. So suppose I have a fourth order tensor C and its indices or its initial expression is one half delta IK, delta JL, plus delta IL, delta JK. So let's go ahead and look and see what this does to a tensor. So we'll apply this to a second order tensor and let's look at what the result is and see if we can interpret it, what this fourth order tensor does. So I'll apply C to a tensor S and I'll do the calculation entirely initially. That's, it's a lot easier. So if I just write this out initially, I copy down the expression for Cij, Kl, and then I'll just fill in S, and I'm going to match the last two indices, so I'll, I'll write Skl. And now I can combine all the terms, multiply through, and then I can use the properties of the Kronecker delta to simplify this. So out of the first one, I have, I have Skl acting on delta IK, delta JL. So that's going to take the K and make it an I, and it's going to take the L and make it a J. So I'll get SIJ. And then from the second term, I have delta IL, so, and I have delta JK. So what that's going to do is it's going to take the L and make it an I, and it's going to take the K and make it a J. So I end up with SJI. So if I look at this, this is basically S added to its transpose and then divided by 2. And that's simply the symmetric part of S. So the action of this fourth order tensor on a second order tensor is to construct its symmetric part. So that's, that's the linear map that we have here. And it's easy to verify that this is linear. Okay, let's look at another example. Suppose I have a, a fourth order tensor P defined by its components P, I, J, K, L, and it is delta I, K, delta J, L, minus one third delta I, J, delta K, L. So this is a given expression. And let's see what happens if I apply this to a second order tensor. So I'm gonna apply it to a second order tensor S, and I'll do, it, do this again initially, it's easier that way. So I, I copy down my components here of P. So that's 
this whole bit here. And then I'll write out S, and I'm going to write SKL. So I match the last two indices of, of the prior fourth order tensor. All right, so it's, I'm thinking PIJ, KL, SKL. So that's just simply this operation here written out initially. And now I'll do the exact same thing. I'll multiply S through and I'll use the properties of the Kronecker delta. So from the in the first term, it's going to give me Sij. So I'll use delta Ik to turn the K here into an I. And I'll use delta Jl to turn the L into a J. And then if I multiply SKL into the second term, I'll have one third delta Ij, delta Kl, multiplied by SKL, I'll write that as SKK. So that's the trace there. So you can see what I have here is I have S minus one third, the trace of S times the identity, All right? And that's simply the deviatoric part of S, so S prime or dev S. Uh, so this fourth order tensor here, P, basically is a tensor that takes it's a fourth order tensor, it takes a second order tensor, and it produces the deviatoric part of that second order tensor. And this is a linear operation here.